Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm so happy that you're here with me. This is part three of my sunscreen episodes. I have part one, which is what happens to your skin when you're out in the sun for a little bit too long without sunscreen. And then I have part two, which is all about bad chemical sunscreen ingredients that you need to avoid at all costs. And there's actually seven of them. Is that so depressing? <laughs> so today is part three, and we're gonna be talking about two fantastic sunscreen ingredients that will definitely make sure you don't have any sunburns this year, and it's amazing. So don't go anywhere. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. I would appreciate it. There's lots of awesome stuff you can learn from me. Okay, out of seven bad chemical ingredients, there's only two really good ones. And so my top favorite is zinc oxide. And zinc oxide is amazing because it's an element found in nature. So that means that since it's natural, it's going to be a lot better for our skin instead of putting a chemical sunscreen ingredient on our skin that's going to be really bad and potentially cause a lot of harm than good. Okay, going on to number two, it lowers inflammation, which a lot of us do get a little bit inflamed in the sun because we're out there for a long period of time, or maybe we just have sensitive skin. And so zinc oxide actually helps inflammation, which is fantastic. It prevents skin cancer instead of giving it to us by wearing sunscreen. And so that is always a plus because we always think that the sun is going to give us cancer, when in all reality, sometimes the sunscreen that we're using is what's causing the cancer. And there's a lot of awesome other YouTube videos out there that will say something like on the title, the skin or the sun doesn't cause cancer, it's actually the sunscreen. So it's kind of sad, but true. It prevents bacterial infections. And so as we know, zinc oxide helps inflammation, helps wound healing, helps bacterial infections. It prevents aging because it's going to protect UVA rays and UVB rays from getting to our skin. Then it's going to be great for anti-aging because the sun breaks down the skin and the collagen and elastin, making us, of course, age a lot worse than we want to. And that's not a good thing, okay? Next is it actually helps with acne breakouts. So if you do suffer from acne and then in the summertime you feel like it gets worse, then there could be some reasoning behind that, right? Because what you use on the skin really makes a huge difference on whether you're going to break out or not. So this is fantastic for acne breakouts because like we just mentioned before, uh, zinc is really good for fighting that inflammation, okay? So you get the protection from the sun by using zinc oxide, and then you also help your acne breakouts. So that's great. Um, and also, just so you know, zinc oxide is used on surfers' noses, right? And lifeguards. And that's why it's like the bright white stuff that they put down the bridge of their nose because if you're out in the sun for a long period of time, like a surfer or like a lifeguard, they're going to get fried on their nose because that is what's sticking out the most. And so they use zinc oxide because it's a fantastic barrier so the sun does not ruin the skin and they don't get sunburned. And then actually zinc oxide is fantastic and it's waterproof. So of course, if you're going in and out of the water constantly, then it's going to wear off, but it's going to work a heck of a lot better than those chemical sunscreens or water babies or banana boat kind that you just spray on. It's not going to last as long on the skin, I promise you, okay? And it is white, which it's, this is so funny. So my oldest son, he is really just got this beautiful olive skin tone all year round. And so when summer hits, he gets super tan. And when I put zinc oxide on him, people just look at him. They're like, what is going on with that kid? Because he does. He looks like Casper the ghost. But I, deep down, I'm like, I don't care what people think. 
because at least I'm protecting my child with the right sunscreen, okay? But just so you know, for us adults that don't want to look like Casper the Ghost because we care what people think, right? Most of us, we want something that's not going to be so white. So there is zinc oxide that's tinted and it is awesome. And I actually use a kind that I will put a little picture up right now on the kind that I use. And there's actually a lot of awesome tinted zinc oxide sunscreens out there. And I actually use those for my makeup in the summertime so I can get the protection that I need. And also it covers really well. And then there's some that kind of act like a BB cream. So it's like, it's awesome. Okay. So they do have tinted. You don't look, you don't have to look like Casper the ghost. Okay. All right. So going on, we, we went through zinc oxide. Now we're going to go on to titanium dioxide. So if you look at the back of the bottle and it just says zinc oxide on active ingredients, and that's totally fine. It doesn't have to have zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, but these two ingredients are awesome if they are together on a sunscreen, but they don't have to be together, if that makes sense. It could be one or the other, okay? So titanium dioxide, it also protects just like zinc against UVA, which is the aging rays. That's what breaks down our collagen and elastin, making us look older than what we want to look. The sun really breaks down the skin. And then it protects against UVB rays, which is the burning rays, and that causes us to burn, okay? So it's a great protector with no chemicals, nothing. And it's a low risk of sensitivity. So that means that other chemical sunscreens, you know, they really do have a higher risk of making your skin look rashy, making it look like you have topical, topical dermatitis of some sort. Uh, a lot of people break out in hives from the chemicals. And so titanium dioxide doesn't have any risk of sensitivity. And I wanted to let you know that zinc oxide, the first one we talked about, it actually is available in powder form, believe it or not. So you can get it in a cream form, but it also comes in powder. And I actually had a friend that reached out to me and her baby just couldn't use anything. And she couldn't even use the zinc oxide cream. And so I told her about the zinc oxide powder and then her daughter was able to use that. So you never know, everybody's skin is so different, and so that might be the case for you. So you just have to try out different formulations of zinc. But either than that story, I've never heard of anybody ever being allergic or sensitive to zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. Both of them are just fantastic for the skin. They're all natural and they don't have any chemicals, which is super, just, it's awesome to know, right? Okay. Also, if you buy a bottle of zinc, just make sure that, that you don't have it for too long because what happens is zinc oxide breaks down and it actually starts to look like cottage cheese after a while. It's disgusting. So just make sure that you buy little tubes every year in the summer and then after that tube is gone, don't go crazy and buy a bunch of other tubes for the next summer <laughs> um, because it won't work. It'll start to break down and start to get really crumbly and cottage cheese-like, and you don't want that to happen. Trust me, it's happened before to me, okay? And then there's also zinc oxide spray, and I don't really recommend it. I have purchased it before, thinking that it was gonna save me a lot of time putting sunscreen on my kids, you know, you just spray it on and go. But zinc oxide is really thick. It's not like the chemical sunscreens that you buy at the store. So since zinc is really thick, and when it tries to come out the spray nozzle, it just does not work out. It gets really clogged or it doesn't really spray very well or evenly across the face. It just kind of splats on the face like paint and it doesn't look good. And then you just have to smear it around anyway. So I have kind of steered away from the zinc oxide spray kind and I just stick with the zinc lotion. Okay. All right. So like I said before, just make sure that your sunscreen has one or both of these ingredients in the active ingredients section on the back of sunscreen. 
because this is what is going to help you not burn this summer. And this is so important for your kids because infant and toddler skin are so much more delicate than adults and you need to make sure that you're protecting them the right way. So I hope that you got a lot from this video and I hope that you will watch part one and part two of my sunscreen episodes and that you will subscribe and please like this video. And also I would love to hear from you. If you liked this video, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you and I will catch you next time. Hey guys, so I forgot to mention about my favorite zinc oxide and titanium dioxide sunscreens. So I will put a picture up in my video, but the one that I was able to find is my Badger. And this one is SPF 30 and this one is their lavender. They have all kinds of different smells to their products. And so if you don't want to smell, that's fine. They have unscented as well, but this one's lavender. It smells really good. And this is the one that I use in the summer for my kids and myself if I don't want to use the tinted kind. So I will also put a picture up of my other favorite, which I do not have available at my house because I ran out this last summer, but it's Goddess Garden and it is amazing stuff. They do have spray kind, but like I said before, I wouldn't recommend it because the zinc oxide doesn't come out of the sprayer very well. And so it just gets clogged, but Goddess Garden is another great one. So those are my top two favorite sunscreens. If you want a really good one this summer, and I will put pictures of those up. Thanks so much, guys.